let's talk about how we add capacity to our environment. Since we're just talking about our capacity view, we're going to be adding some disks and removing some disks from our disk groups, both in vCenter and from the command line. So let's start off by jumping in vCenter. We're going to start off by clicking on our cluster, clicking on configure, and then going down to disk management. We're going to be adding a disk to host one. I've actually added disks to all of our hosts, but for this video, we're going to be adding a disk to host one. So I'm going to go ahead and click on our disk group, which currently has two disks in use, but you can see it's two out of three. So it tells us we've got a third disk that is available for vSAN. If for some reason you're not seeing your disk, you know you've put your disk in the right host, you've done a rescan, but you're still not seeing it as eligible for vSAN. We want to make sure this disk is tagged correctly. Is it tagged as an HDD for a hybrid environment or an SSD for an all flash environment? This happens to be an all flash environment, but sometimes a disk may be mistagged as HDD for an all flash environment. And the way you can fix that is if we go to our host, in this case, host one, and click on storage adapters, and then go down to our controller. We can click on the disk. We see we've got one disk that's not being consumed by any storage compared to our other two disks, which are being used for vSAN. And we can make sure it's marked correctly. This one is tagged as flash, but if for some reason it's not, we can check the button and we can click mark as flash, or in this case, it can say it marked as H HDD because it's already tagged as flash. Okay, with that out of the way, let's head back to our disk management. I'm gonna click on our disk group, and then click on add disks. I'm gonna check that box again and click on add. Those are the steps that would work for all of our different types of configuration. If you have an all flash environment, or you have an all flash environment with deduplication compression, if we have a compression only environment, or we have a hybrid environment, those same steps would work for all of your environments. So let's talk about how to remove a disk next and we're gonna do it in an environment that doesn't have deduplication and compression. We'll talk about that here in a moment. So I'm gonna click on our disk group again. This time at the bottom, I'm gonna check the radio button next to one of our disks. And I'm gonna click on remove disks. When our dialog box pops up, this should look a little bit familiar with our maintenance mode video. We've got those same options as no data migration, where we don't move any data in the environment. We've got ensure accessibility, which checks, can I take away this resource, in this case, this disk? and still have access to our storage policies. After that 60 minute timer elapses, we would then kick off a resync. Or we've got a full data migration option. We take all the data on that disk and we put it on one of our other disks in the environment. And for whatever option you choose, you just wanna make sure that's appropriate for your environment. For me personally, I would probably recommend full data migration if we're decommissioning a healthy disk. When I say a healthy disk, I mean something that's active, that has objects so we can access. If we have a failed disk, like a PDL, a permanent device loss, we can't do a data migration on a disk that has failed. As a result, we would do a no data migration. In the bottom left-hand corner, we've got our pre-check options. We can click on pre-check and see what is the impact of taking this disk away. We've got a couple different tabs for us. We've got our object state that'll tell us what's gonna be the health of our objects after we do this action. Next to that is our cluster capacity. Since we're taking a disk away from host one, we can see what does our usage look like and what does our total capacity look like for that host. And then next to it is our predictive health. Our predictive health will tell us what is gonna be the health of our objects. We can see that all of our objects will be in a healthy state once we remove this disk. I'm gonna head back to configure and click on disk management. Since this is just a lab environment, I'm gonna use the ensure accessibility option and then click on remove. Now that the disk is removed, we can see we've got one cache disk and one capacity disk in our disk group. Now we've talked about how to remove a disk in a non dedupe and compression environment or compression only environment, let's head over to a dedupe and compressed environment. We can see that deduplication and compression is enabled. I'm gonna click on disk management and remove one of our disks. We'll pick on host one again, and I'm gonna click on one of the capacity disks and then click on remove disk. We can see that this time it generates an error saying we can't remove an individual capacity disk. And we talked about this a little bit more in depth in our disk group video, but just a quick recap. For deduplication and compression, we have a set of hash maps, which hashes all of our blocks of data for a disk group. And we've got a translation map, which says where are all these blocks of data located on this disk group. We spread those maps across all of the disks in our disk group. So if we were to delete one individual disk, we would lose part of that map. So in a dedupe and compressed environment, we need to delete the entire disk group versus an individual disk. I'm gonna click on okay, and let's delete an entire disk group. I'm gonna choose our disk group, 
then click on the three dots, and then click on Remove. We also have the option to recreate. So if for some reason there was an issue with this disk group, vSAN would destroy this disk group and recreate this disk group in the exact same state as it was prior to whatever issue was going on. It's like a fresh slate for our disk group. So now that we've talked about how to do it via the GUI, let's jump into the command line. And we're doing the exact same steps we just went through, but using the command line. We're going to start out with our non deduped and compressed environment. The command that I like to run to see what does our disk groups look like on this particular host is VDQ I capital H. There's all the ways to look at this information. That's just the command that I like to run. I think it gives a nice layout of our disk groups. We can see at the top, we've got our SSD, and we can see the mapping to it. In your environment, it'll most likely be NAA or something else. This is a nested lab environment, so it looks a little bit different. And this is where a little bit of a throwback happens to our vSAN 5.5 days. So we see we've got SSD for that first line. That tells us it's our cache disk. MD back in the 5.5 days meant magnetic disk, which would have been our capacity disk. So this is just a holdover from our 5.5 days. This says we've got one cache disk, which is our max per disk group, and we've got one capacity disk. So don't let the magnetic disk throw you off. This is an all flash environment when we've got one capacity disk. The next command I wanna run will tell us which disks are available or which disks are eligible for vSAN. And that'll be our VDQ-IQ. So right at the top, we've got our name. This will most likely be NAA for your environment. Then skipping down just a little bit, let's go to state. This tells us this disk is in use by vSAN versus some of the other ones beneath it which say ineligible for use by vSAN. And if it's ineligible, we can look at the reason why. So for that third disk, it says it has a partition. For vSAN to be able to claim a disk, it has to have no partitions on it whatsoever. If it does have a partition, we can either delete it via the command line or delete it via vCenter. Our next line is is SSD. This tells us is this disk an SSD or NVMe, or if it's a zero, then it's a spinning disk. Underneath that, we've got our is capacity flash. This is saying, can we use this disk as a capacity disk? This is specific for environments that are all flash configuration. We're gonna walk through how to tag a disk here in a few moments when we start talking about deduplication and compression. Even though this setting is not specific to deduplication and compression, I wanna go through this first, do the initial walkthrough, and then we'll layer on this next configuration here in a moment. Underneath that, we've got our is PDL. This is our permanent device loss. So if you have a disk that fails and it comes back to vCenter and says, this disk has failed, this would be a one. If it's zero, this means that this disk is available. And then underneath that, we've got some additional information that we don't need to worry about for adding a disk. So I'm gonna go down just a little bit and find one of our disks that we can use for vSAN. We can see that second to last disk is eligible for use by vSAN it is an SSD and it is capacity flash. This looks like a good candidate to add to our disk group. I'm gonna go ahead and quit out of here. Another way we can look at our disks for vSAN is our ESX CLI vSAN storage list command. This will tell us what disks do we have now in this moment for vSAN. It won't tell us what disks are eligible for vSAN. We can see we've got two entries. And the way we can tell which disk is cache and which disk is capacity is by looking at the device name and comparing it to our disk group name. So that very first entry, we see our device name, we've got VM HBA2, controller zero, target one, LUN zero. But our disk group name though is VM HBA2, controller zero, target zero, LUN zero. If those two names match up, that tells me this is the cache disk. We can also see at the bottom, we've got that is capacity tier whether that's false or true. That first entry says it's true for a capacity tier. That second entry is our cache disk, which says it's false. I'm gonna quit out of here and we can add that disk now. The command I wanna to use to add a disk to a disk group is ESX CLI vSAN storage add. And for that command, we're saying we wanna add this to an existing disk group, but I need to specify what is our disk group name. So we're gonna do a dash S for SSD and then put in our device name. In this case, VMHBA2, controller zero, target zero, LUN zero. We can gather that either from the VDQ command or that ESX CLI vSAN storage list command. After that, we want to do a dash D and then specify the device name for the disk we want to add. 
In this case, it's gonna be our VM HBA2, controller zero, target two, one zero. And to grab that, I'll use our VDQ command. Now that we've added a disk to our disk group, we can use our VDQ-I capital H command again and see we've added a new disk. And just to take a step back, if we had multiple disk groups, we would see we've got a disk mapping zero, a disk mapping one, two, three, and four, since vSAN supports a maximum of five disk groups. Let's also look at our ESX CLI vSAN storage list command to see what does that look like now. We can see we've got a third device added and that's at the bottom. Now that we've added a disk, let's go through the process of removing a disk. We'll do it in this environment first, and then we'll jump over to our dedupe and compressed environment. So the command I wanna use is our ESX CLI vSAN storage remove command. And I'm gonna put a dash M option after that, and that specifies what maintenance mode option should we use. Just like we walked through the steps in the GUI, we have our different removal options. We do ensure accessibility, full data migration, or no action. And again, we'll pick which one works best for your environment. I'm gonna type in a remove command again, and then put a dash D. This is saying, which disk do you want to remove? In this case, it's gonna be our target two disk. After that, I'll put a dash M, and I'm gonna specify the ensure accessibility option, just to have it complete a little bit faster. I'm gonna press enter. Now that our disk has been removed, let's use our VDQ dash I capital H, and see what does that look like? We've got one cache disk and one capacity disk, which is what we were expecting. So now I've gone through the process of how to add a disk and remove a disk. Let's jump over to a deduped and compressed environment. Let's talk about that is cache flash and then go through the process of how to remove a disk. Or in this case, how to remove a disk group. We're gonna be using our VDQ dash I lowercase Q to figure out which disk do we wanna use. We need to have got one entry that is eligible for use by vSAN that currently has a zero in its is capacity flash. Let's try to add this disk and let's see what error message we're gonna get. I'm gonna press Q to quit out of here. We're gonna be using our storage add command to add this to our disk group. I'm gonna use the dash S option to specify which disk group we're gonna be adding this to, followed by dash D saying, I wanna add this disk to this disk group. But now we can see we've got an error message saying that we can't add this as a vSAN HDD. And that's because we have an all flash environment and this disk is not tagged as capacity flash. To tag this disk as capacity flash, we can use our ESX CLI vSAN storage tag command. And I'm gonna press enter because there's a couple different options. But ultimately, we wanna use the add option. We wanna add a tag to this disk. In our add command, we've got two different options. We've got our disk, which disk are we adding a tag to? And our dash T option, what tag are we adding? In this case, we can add capacity flash or we can add vSAN direct. vSAN direct is a way that we can specify a single disk to be used for a VM. So I think like a Hadoop or a Kafka type cluster, we could use it for that purpose. I'm gonna go ahead and up arrow, do a dash D and specify which disk, do a dash T and specify capacity flash. If we use our VDQ command again with the IQ option, we can see that now we've got a one for is capacity flash. So let's go rerun our command again and see if we can add that disk to our disk group. We've pressed entered and no error messages came back. Let's use our VDQ command to see our disk mappings. There's one last thing to talk about before we wrap up this video. And that's how do we delete an entire disk group from the command line? We'll be using the exact same command we just used, or I should say we used in the previous example, which is our ESX CLI vCN storage remove command. And once we press enter, there's a couple ways we can specify this. We can do our disk option, which is saying, I wanna remove this particular disk. We could specify our cache disk in this case. We could do a dash S or SSD to say, I wanna remove this caching disk or this SSD from the environment. Or we can do a dash U. This would be our UID for our disk group. And we saw our UID just a few moments ago with our ESX CLI vSAN storage list command. We can see, okay, this is the UID of our disk group. This is the one we wanna destroy. I'm gonna use our storage remove command again with the dash S option, specifying our caching SSD. And then at the end of it, we can do a dash M and specify full data migration, ensure accessibility, or no data migration. Now that we've come back to the command line, we can use our VDQ dash I capital H to see what does that look like now. And for our disk mappings, we've got nothing listed. We have no disk groups on this host. If we head over to vCenter, we can see we've got zero out of three disks available. 
So three disks that we could use to create a new disk group. At this point, I think we're at a good place to wrap up this video. We broke this video into two different parts. For our first part, we jumped into vCenter and added a disk to one of our existing disk group. We then removed that disk, and then we jumped into another lab environment where we removed that disk from a deduped and compressed environment, deleting that entire disk group. From there, we jumped into the command line and did those exact same steps. I hope you found this video informative. I'd like to thank you for watching.